member of our broadcast team to introduce you to the coaches. Here's Maddie Morris. With both UTSA and FIU looking for that coveted sixth win for ball eligibility tonight, head coaches Frank Wilson and Butch Davis have done an incredible job leading their teams to success this season. Welcome to the COSA Showcase. I'm Eddie Morris, joined by Ron Thulin. That's right, Ron and Keith. Now, not only does Autry Golden play wide receiver for the Miners, but he's also their top kickoff returner. The last time a Conference USA Men's Soccer Championship was held here at Old Dominion, the Monarchs came away with the title. Fast forward three years, and the Monarchs find themselves one win away from raising the trophy on their home turf once again. Coach, I know you said you pride yourself on your guys' defensive efforts, and I know they had a lot of pressure this half. So I guess, what are you guys going to try to do to possess it more? Coming in with a target on their back as the top seed and the regular season champs. The Lady Toppers have made it to the championship game once again, but it wasn't a walk in the park. Hey everyone, Maddie Morris with Conference USA up here in Denton, Texas for day two of the Women's Conference Championship. Today's rivalry game between Florida Atlantic and FIU is known as the Shula Bowl after former Miami Dolphin head coach Don Shula. It's pretty chilly out here in Milwaukee as I have my winter coat and gloves on, 33 degrees to be exact. But inside the BMO Harris Bradley Center, the Blue Raiders are ready to heat things up this afternoon. What does it kind of feel like to kind of get that first game under your belt for the tournament? Obviously, you guys had a bye for the quarterfinals. Coach Davis, an amazing accomplishment. Back-to-back -back championships. That game was not an easy one, though. Oh. Here with head coach Marshall. Coach, what did you tell your players before this game that they came out swinging those bats like that? Thanks, guys. And actually, quarterback Chase Linton will be wearing a different yet number than usual tonight. Instead of wearing the number one, he'll be wearing the number 14 in honor of the late quarterback, Ted Shoebridge. Now, all the games we've talked about involve schools who have gone bowling recently, but this next school hasn't played in a bowl game since 2008, and it's our 2017 conference champs, Florida Atlantic. They'll be playing at home in the Cherubundi Tart Cherry Boca Raton Bowl against Akron. Now, I don't know how much you know about these teams, maybe some more than others, yeah. um, but what are some things that each team has to do to be successful in tonight's game? Uh, obviously, there's some question on who's going to be playing quarterback, but it doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback when you have <laughs> someone like Richie James in the game. Barely sneaking into the tournament as the ace seed this year, the 2016 conference champs, the Charlotte 49ers, find themselves playing in their second straight title game. Let's take a look back to see how the team got to the point of defending their title. Thanks guys. Now for UTEP interim head coach Mike Price, this is not his first time coaching here in Roberts Stadium. Price, who coached the UTEP Miners from 2004 to 2012, is actually a perfect 2-0 here in Hattiesburg. I had a chance to catch up with Coach Price yesterday and asked about his most vivid memory of coaching the Miners to victory here at The Rock. Coach, so you guys were able to win at home yet again. You're undefeated here at home. Do you guys have a special mojo here? Now, David Morgan is a leader for this Roadrunner program. He's actually been with it since the beginning in 2011, and he has the most touchdowns for the program with a total of seven. And recently this week, he was named to the John Mackey watch list, which is an award given to one of the nation's top tight ends. And not only is he good at catching touchdowns, but he also was the only player at Media Days in West Palm Beach in July who caught the fish. So, you know, he's catching fish, he's catching touchdowns. Who knows what he's going to do today in the game? As the head coach, what is it like to see the players experience this success how they, since they haven't had it in a while? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, it is, it's as much joy as I think I've ever had. With so much on the line, which team will be advancing to play the winner of North Carolina in Arkansas and Memphis next week? Tune in to TBS at 6, 10 p.m. Central to see if the Blue Raiders can continue their magical season. For Conference USA, I'm Maddie Morris. Like most people living in Murfreesboro, the members of the Demo family are huge Middle Tennessee fans. We're season ticket holders for the football team, baseball, basketball, and my children uh, have just grown up in that culture, and we love it. The family's biggest Blue Raiders enthusiast, though, may be 10-year-old Eli. Just uh, been a Blue Raiders fan for like 10 years. He's Blue Raider everything right now. When he grabs onto something, he, he really, really sticks with it. Eli has high-functioning autism, meaning he oftentimes becomes very focused and devoted on something specific. And what especially caught Eli's eye recently was the school's pet band. Uh, during our basketball season, he really started gravitating towards the band, you know, and he started to learn our pet band numbers, and then how to do our fight song, and then he started having his plastic trumpet, so he just gravitated toward us, and we took him in, like one of our own members. This past basketball season, Eli became an honorary member of the pet band, getting to stand with them and play his trumpet during all the songs. Fight song, Tennessee Waltz, Hey Girl, Hey Baby, they play No and, and all the other songs. And it's not just the band who has embraced him, but the entire Blue Raider community, including his favorite player on the team. 
our security guard said that I just had a, a big fan who was waiting uh, on us to run up the tunnel. And then, um, you know, it, it just happened just one day. He just came down and gave me a hug. And um, from there, he was at every game after that. And um, it's kind of just been our routine. Um, he'll just sit there and he'll wait for me. And then uh, right before we run up, he'll, he'll give me a high five and then a hug. And then it's game time after that. Eli and his family were able to cheer on the Blue Raiders in Birmingham for the conference championship. And just as the journey didn't end there for the team, it didn't end there for Eli either. He got to travel to Milwaukee and stand alongside the band as the Blue Raiders played on the big stage in the NCAA tournament. It's clear that Eli is a special boy in more ways than one. And for those in the band and in the Blue Raider community, he has become an integral part of the True Blue family. We in the band just we promote love, you know, and we were very happy that he wanted to be a part of us and we we're very welcoming. And so to find out that he was autistic was like, you know, I don't know, extra special because it's like we may have an influence and, you know, a special impact on this, this student, this child. They know about, you know, about, about, you know, how he is, but he is not treated any differently. And that's what we love about it. That's what we love about the university and, you know, all, all of the sports. To see us win, brings joy to his life so um you know for him to be happy makes everybody happy hopefully he feels loved and feels you know like one of us because we think he is <laughs>